Hello and welcome to the channel. This is the third lesson of the Excel VBA tutorial for beginners. In this video, we'll talk about the Excel object model and we'll learn what are properties and methods. Every element in Excel is represented by an object in VBA. Objects include files, sheets, ranges, cells, shapes, charts, buttons, text boxes, etc. VBA can get the attributes and state of those objects, as well as modifying their attributes and state through properties and methods. A property is an attribute of an object or an aspect of its behavior, such as color, size, etc. A method is an action that can be applied to an object, like, for example, open, copy, etc. The general VVA object structure uses a dot or a period as a separator between the object and the property or method. So object.property or object.method. Let's see an example to understand this. Imagine the object is a car and we want a red car with two doors and 200 horsepower engine. Uh, those are the properties and we would assign them like this, car.color equals red, car.door number equals two, and so on. And if we want the car to drive or to stop driving, we could write something like this, and uh, uh, car.drive or car.stop, and these are methods. Let's see how that works with Excel objects. This picture shows some of the most common VBA objects. The application object represents the entire Microsoft Excel application. Within the application, there are workbook objects. You see here we have three workbook objects, and each workbook has the respective worksheet objects, and then a range objects and cells, etc. Now, let me close this and go to the VBA editor and show you how we write the object-oriented code. Let's insert a module and a macro. I'll call it object model. So, for example, if we want to refer to a particular range in the active sheet, we would write something like this. Range A1 D8 dot select. In, in this case, we select that object. We could also copy or assign a value and many more things, but we'll get to that. Objects of the same type form or belong to a collection. For example, the workbook object is part of the workbook's collection, and the worksheet object is part of the worksheet's collection. This means when referring to a particular workbook or worksheet, we need to reference the right name or index that represents it within that collection. So to select a particular sheet, let's say uh, sheet one, we can use either the sheet name or the index. So let's do it here. Uh, worksheets sheet one dot select, or we could also write worksheets one, that's using the index dot, dot select. Um, objects are arranged in a hierarchy that needs to be followed. In order to refer to a range in other sheet, we need to specify the path within the object hierarchy using the dot separator. So for example, if we want to refer to a range in sheet two instead, we would write worksheets sheet two dot range um, a1 to d8 uh, dot copy. For example, in, in this case, we copy the range. Or if that should always apply to whatever sheet is active, then we write active sheet dot range and so on. The object hierarchy can go even farther if we want to reference a range in a particular sheet of a particular workbook of the Excel application. So we would write application dot workbooks uh, book one dot worksheets sheet two for example dot range 
a1 to d4 uh, dot copy. So usually we do not need to reference the application because there's only one application. And workbooks, yes, if we want to reference to a particular workbook. And if you want to dive deeper into this, you should know that an object is an instance of a class which holds instructions for the object to operate. Excel comes with libraries of classes that set the basis to work with objects. Those libraries are part of the available references we can access in the VBA editor under Tools, References, right here. All classes and objects and their respective members, meaning the properties, methods, events that apply to them, can be found in the Excel object browser, just clicking this icon here. Note that the methods are referred to as functions or subs in the object browser. As we saw earlier, we get or modify the attributes or state of objects with properties and methods. And actually, objects can also respond to events. We will see that in a moment, but let's start with properties. Properties are attributes we can get from or give to an object. Some commonly used properties are uh, name, value, size, color, row height, number format, horizontal alignment, border around, etc. For example, the name property of the application object returns the name of the application we are using. So if we write MSG box application dot name, we get the name of the application, and that's of course Microsoft Excel. Remember that properties can either get or give modify attributes. In this case, we just get the name attribute of the application object, and that's displayed in a message box. Let's see another example where we're gonna give or assign a value to cell A1 and we will use the value property of the range object. So we write range a1 dot value equals 10, for example. So again, we are using the object dot property structure. But here, we pass or assign an attribute, the value 10. And what are methods? Methods are actions that can be applied to an object. Some common methods are select, clear, copy, cut, paste, open, close, move, merge, add, delete, and so on. Um, let's see some examples. To add a new worksheet in the active workbook, we would write worksheets.add. So object, or collection in this case, dot the method add. Note that we wrote worksheets and not worksheet. Uh, most of the properties and actions for a worksheet need to specify the particular sheet or worksheet within the worksheets collection. And therefore, we write worksheets with S. So for example, worksheets sheet one dot delete. Now we are using the delete method of the worksheet object. Let's see another example. In this example, we will copy a range using the method copy of the range object. So range a1 d4 dot copy. And that will actually copy values and format. And that would take the range in the active sheet and the active workbook at the time of running the macro. But as we've seen earlier, if we want to target a range in a particular worksheet, we need to specify in which sheet is located following the hierarchy. So worksheets sheet one dot range a1 d4 dot copy. That would copy the range in sheet one specifically. Now let's talk about events. Objects respond to various events that occur, such as opening or closing a file, changing the selected worksheet or range, right-click or double-click in a worksheet, following a hyperlink, etc. As we saw in the previous lesson, Excel VBA allows to handle um, certain events for the worksheet and workbook objects with event procedures. 
We already saw the example of a workbook open event procedure. For that, we need to go to this workbook, select the workbook object, and get the object, um, get the workbook open event, which shows by default. And whatever we write here will run when the workbook opens. So for example, this message box, this will display a welcoming message box when the workbook opens. Let's see another example, but now with the worksheet object. So let's go to sheet one here, select the worksheet, and by default, we get the selection change event, which is often used, but we could get any other. So whatever code we write here will execute when changing the selected cell. So let's write application dot calculate. So we use the calculate method of the application object. And this workbook dot save using the save method of the workbook object. In particular, of this workbook where the macro where we have the macro. We could use active workbook to save whatever workbook is active when running the macro, or we could specify a particular workbook with, with workbooks and the name of the workbook uh, in parentheses. So same as we've seen earlier with the worksheets. This macro calculates all formulas and saves the workbook every time we change the selected range or cells in a particular worksheet. There are other events that do not apply neither to the workbook nor to the worksheet objects, and they do not require an event procedure to be handled. An example of this is the on-time event, which is actually a method of the application object. It runs an existing procedure at a certain time. So let's go back to the module, and here, for example, um, let's say sub macro one and we write application dot on time and time value 1800 comma and here we put macro two so then we should have another macro here let me put here sub macro two and when we run the first macro, it will keep in computer's memory this appointment to run the other macro at 6 o'clock. So I'm not going to run it. Another example is the onKey event, which runs a procedure when a particular key is pressed. So for example, let's say sub get keys, and with the application dot onKey for A, comma, another macro, let's call it other macro. And here down we put sub other macro. Uh, let's put a message box saying you pressed A. And from the moment we ran the macro get keys, pressing the letter A is associated with other macro. L let me play get keys. And now in my keyboard, I pressed A and here we get the message from the other macro. We can just stop it with application on key A. So I'm going to remove that and play it again. So now it's gone. The last thing we'll cover is the with statement. The with statement is used to simplify object references. It requires an object qualifier to follow, and everything between with and end with refers to that object. This is very useful when applying numerous properties to an object and can reduce the volume of code and make it easier to read. Let me show you an example. We're going to apply some properties to cell A1. So with active sheet dot range A1, and let's say we're going to assign a value. So dot value equals mm, discussion. For example, we can format the font, so dot font dot name equals Arial, and dot font dot size equals 14. And here we end the width. 
So that would apply the code to that particular range. And that's it for now. We've covered the object model and learned what are properties and methods and events, and also how to use the with statement with objects. In the next video, we'll focus specifically on the range object. See you there.